Hello everybody, Forest against Derby matches certainly got the juices flowing down the years, whether it might be the 5-2 win against Derby at the city ground being thrashed at Pride Park by five goals to nil. Always a match that you would remember. Well, David Marples, a Forest fan, has written a book about the Reds and the Rams and how that fixture, how the rivalry has developed, how it developed with Brian Clough as Forest manager and Derby manager as well. Plenty of interesting history and insight from David Marples next. David, great to see you again um, from the other side of the world. Tell us a bit about the book and, and why you decided to write it. No problem. Thanks for having me on, Robin. It's really good to, uh, it's really good to chat about this. Um, so, I mean, there's been many books about sort of uh, various rivalries, and obviously there's, there's many rivalries out there worldwide. Um, and there's, there's various lists out there which state that this one rivalry X is the most fierce one in the world. And it just got me thinking that um, right here, Forest and Derby is perhaps not one of the necessarily the biggest rivalries, but certainly one of the most fiercely contested rivalries um, that, that occurs not only in England, but certainly in world, world football, I would suggest. And, and in addition to that, I think it's got its very own flavour and very sort of it's very unique one in terms of the history of it, in terms of the uh, sociology of it as well. So I think I think in that sense, really, that's what sparked this idea that beyond uh beyond these midlands people see it as a, as a keenly fought rivalry but possibly forget about it and it just cops up once in a while but uh, around these parts i certainly think that it's uh, it's a rivalry that, that deserves its own history being told and, and being um sort of more widespread and known there's certainly a story there that dates really back from victorian times and in telling that story i think it's a story of english football as a whole and how it's evolved and how it's changed and also tells us something about rivalries themselves too. Do you think it's not, I mean, it's obviously huge in Derby, it's huge in, in Nottingham. Do you think it doesn't get the attention in the UK so much because it's not often been played, certainly recently, at the top level? So, you know, people talk about Rangers Celtic, obviously, Liverpool, mm -hmm. Everton, um, mm -hmm. Arsenal, Spurs and Southampton, Portsmouth, whoever it might be, but it's not often been at the, at the top level. No, it's not been for a while. I think if from, from top of my head, I think the last time in 1989 was the last time the rivalry was played when two clubs, I think it's the highest place. And I think in that season, I think Forest finished sixth and Derby finished, uh, sorry, finished for his fifth, Derby finished sixth. And that was the last time that this rivalry was played. That was the peak of its sort of rivalry in terms of the top flight as well. So I think there's absolutely something in that. And since then, I guess the majority of the games have been played out in the the literal hurly-burly of the championship since 2009 to um, obviously last season. And, um, you know, that, that, that seems to have been this kind of, that's how it's been perceived by the media, definitely. And Sky have loved these games. They've always shown them. Um, but you're absolutely right. Beyond that, in terms of high-level rivalry, in terms of football, at least on the pitch, it's kind of fallen off the radar a little bit, definitely. Is it a game that has got more fierce, do you think, as, as time has, has gone up? Has it, has it got skied, if you like, and, you know, the, the, <laughs> hype, the hype comes into it? Or, or was it always just as fierce going back to the 60s and 70s? I think there's, if, if you watch footage, certainly from a game in 1983, but even a game, I think it's 77, where there are some fearsome tackles at the city ground going on on both sides. I'm not sure, certainly on the pitch, that, um, that that necessarily is the case. I think on the pitch, the rivalry in terms of uh, brutality has been going on for a long time. In terms of how it's evolved, certainly since, I, I mean, I, I often refer to the, the game, which um, uh, I think it was 2009, when Forrest and Derby met. So Forrest had come up from League One, uh, promoted. Derby had come down from uh, their um, terrible season in Premier League. And, and they met at Derby in Pride Park um, and, and in an absolutely bonkers game. And I think that was like sort of two atoms being fired in a Hadron Collider. And that set the tone for the next 14 years between these two clubs on the pitch, certainly. I mean, that game uh, at Pride Park with the Lee Camp last minute penalty saves, the, the goals ro ruled out from Miles Addison. I think you were there. That was a, that was a truly bonkers game. It was. It was. And, you know, that era... You know, that kind of 10-year spell where there's all sorts going on. There's the Tyson corner flag, but Derby win 5-0 to see Billy Davis out the door. There's the, the Nigel Clough being or oh, kneeing Billy Davis. There's allegedly. These, allegedly, yeah. <laughs> I think it was on video, but there's all sorts yeah. going on. And 
obviously there's the Clough name, the, the Billy Davis name, having managed both clubs as well. But that kind of 10, 15 year period, I couldn't pin it down exactly. But it did seem as though something went off at every game. Every single game. And that part of the book where I, I, I zoom in, obviously tell the history of Derby and Forest, but zoom in on these games. Um, and, and you're absolutely right. It seems every single game something happened. We almost forget in amongst it, you know, one of the least controversial moments is, is Nigel Clough and Billy Davis on the touchline. Now, obviously, it, it just tends to get, get forgotten in amongst everything else. Steve McLaren, obviously managing both clubs as well. Um, Chris Commons scoring the hat trick. A, a, a great subtitle for this book is in many ways, you know, uh, corner flags and coffee cups. Uh, and you could chuck and gluff at the end as well. Sounds like a stereophonic really, song, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it just epitomises everything that went off in those in those fourteen years. Now, um, so what happened with the rivalry there is that, well, arguably one might say it got more fierce, and I think in many ways it did. Oh, which reminds me, I think before that first game there was a sheep's head thrown into a pub as well in Derby. Uh, it, it just it is all these things kind of happened. Um, did the rivalry is that more because fierce? there was an absence? Yes, because there were I, years I without it. So. Yeah. I think so. And there was, but the thing is, it wasn't a huge absence. Um, they, they, we, they played each other in the 90s, but not particularly frequently. Um, but I think there was that absence. But then I, I think also it's because you've got the clubs coming from two different directions. Uh, Derby down from the Premier League, hurting massively. Forrest coming up thinking, wow, well, that was awful, but we're back where we need to be. Um, and I think that's just what sparked it in, in many ways. Now, this would be a simplistic take as well. But around about that time, you've got the, the rise of social media uh, a, 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 in a more popular form as well. Mm. Uh, so not only have you got fans off the pitch, you know, having to be uh, separated, Forest fans having, and Derby fans having to be kept behind after games as well. But let's just chuck in something else just to make, let's, let, let, let's allow this platform so that people can snipe at each other uh, from their own homes as well and you, you and you've got this taking on the the rivalry not necessarily to more fierceness but certainly to another level it's all encompassing then and, and that would be obviously that would relate to any rivalry as well and did it step up once Clough had arrived at the city ground Brian Clough I'm talking about arrived at the city ground kind of not from Derby but having been at Derby I think so. Uh, I certainly spoke to a few people regarding that. And there was always an antipathy between the clubs, naturally. Uh, some people say that during the 60s, that antipathy, certainly from a Forest perspective, lent itself more to Leicester. Um, and, but, but, you know, rivalries, antagonism don't just go away. But I think when, you know, when Brian Clough was being successful with Derby, um, and then you've got the idea of the so many sort of players trading between the two clubs once Clifford taken over at Derby and then leaves Derby and then comes over to Forest. And you've got this, this well-trodden route on the A52 between the two clubs in terms of players. Um, and I think... And that's um, quite unusual, isn't it, in Derby? Yes. If you look at, but obviously for, for fairly obvious reasons, Rangers and Celtic, you don't get many playing for both, but also Liverpool-Everton, you don't get many that, no. that play for both. Villa-Birmingham, the same kind of thing. And they, they yeah, there's few, and we, we know about those, and they stand out. But obviously with Forest, you've got so many players between the two. And I think perhaps from a Derby perspective, they look at what Brian did with Forest after leaving Derby with three or four, possibly five at times, players who played for him at Derby as well. So that, they, 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 and this is, this is a kind of, the thing about the, the the rivalry, there's so many um, angles, there's so many factors getting chucked into the rivalry every time. So under the Clough years, you've got all of that going on. And there's also what I learned about is that once Brian had left Derby in, in typically Brian Clough in, in unusual circumstances where he resigned and maybe he didn't really mean to resign, but he did and he couldn't go back on it. So he's he ended up at Forest with reluctantly Peter Taylor after a few years. But um after a few years back at Forest, um, it seemed like Brian hadn't, well, he did. There's no seemed about it. Derby approached Brian to come back. And reading between the lines, looking at the reports, there was at one point where the Derby board were fairly confident he was going to come back as well, uh, back oh. to Derby. So if that were to have happened, um, well, Forest, Nottingham Forest history would have been extremely different. Um, so it was. This was after European about, days or, or before, before? Before the European that. days, right. while he's been right. at Forest about a year. Um, and he's had a slow start, obviously, uh, not um, um, not really pulling up any trees, uh, pardon the pun. Um, and, and Derby went back to him, you know, and, and and obviously Peter Taylor, I think, 
reading between the lines and looking at his heart, he, he always kind of wanted to necessarily go back to Derby. And of course, he did end up back there as manager in 83, even after resigning uh, uh, from football altogether. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I think it was fairly close that they both ended up sort of leaving or being attracted back to Derby uh, before, obviously, the title win in uh, in 78. And, and uh, I think ultimately, Brian sort of, well, the reason he gives in the press anyway, it's always difficult to tell the actual reasons, but the reason he gives is because he started the job at Nottingham and he's got a job he feels he needs to complete. Mm. In terms of the book, who did you speak to? I assume you spoke to players who'd appeared for both or had been instrumental in in derby matches, had been the focus of controversy or debate or, or whatever. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I spoke to John McGovern, uh, obviously, who was incredibly successful with both. And, and obviously, from a Forest point of view, it's often forgotten that McGovern was, was you know, won the title with Derby County and was an integral part of things there and, and played in the European Cup as well. So I spoke to John McGovern and obviously he had some great stories to tell about the, the fierceness of it as well and going back to, to the baseball ground um, with, with, with a Forest team as well. So it's fascinating insights from John McGovern, who, as you can imagine, was almost pleased to tell tell his story um, but I also wanted to try to people to speak to people from different eras as well so uh, I spoke to Steve Sutton as well who again fascinating character to speak to born in born in Derbyshire uh, as a kid uh, went to Derby numerous times as a fan with his dad um, and then uh, ended up playing for Forest with distinction for like the 80s for many years but you know in typical rivalry fashion ends up back at Derby uh, and seeing out the uh, last part of his career at Derby and, and receiving some um, shall we say friendly words of encouragement from Derby faithful when he got back there as well uh, so really fascinating to see uh, to speak to somebody who's got you know the feet in both camps as it were uh, and I also spoke to, want to speak to somebody a bit more sort of contemporary as well. So I spoke to Sean Barker as well, who played with Derby for Derby, represented Derby again with distinction in the more recent period. But again, it turns out his family, at least, were, were, were Nottingham based and some of his friends were Forest fans as well. So it was really fascinating to see the other side of that, too, and how he sort of uh, perceives um, this great story he tells about sort of uh, being on the Derby coach as a player, turning into the city ground to arrive for a game, um, and the the abuse that the Derby coach experienced at that time, uh, he says it was off the scale. So, be really interesting tales as well from from these people who've experienced both. But what they all agree on is that possibly cliched, but it's the first fixture you look for as a Derby or a Forest player. It's the one that you want to play. It's the one that you want to be involved in. And obviously, most importantly, it's the one that you want to win. And it's the one that um, the fans are always keen to speak to you about. Uh, and it can make heroes of you. Um, and it can, because football fans, as, as all of them say, will forgive you a lot if you just win that game. But obviously, on the other side of the coin, it can make villains of you as well. There is more to come from David Marples in just a moment. If you're interested in buying his book, perhaps as a Christmas present or a gift to yourself, I'll pop a link in the description below and you can go through and order it from there. My thanks to members of Chippers Club who continue to support the channel. Their names are scrolling on the screen as you can see. If you want to sign up from Chippers Club along with a link to David's book that is in the description below. There are other ways of supporting the channel as well. You can make a one-off donation using the dollar sign uh, which is just below this video or you can sign up for these as podcasts via my Patreon page, that is patreon.com slash sportchippers. Thanks for your support. If you like the channel, that will help as well, and comment below. That will also spread this video to more people, and you'll be doing your bit as well. But let's get back to more of the history of the Reds and the Rams with David Marples. It could obviously finish off managers, as we saw, <laughs> pretty regularly in the, in the early Absolutely. part of the century, or it can be the beginning of the end of of managers as well and you can kind of trace their demise back to uh, a defeat to Derby it has a kind of uh, if you lose it it has a, a destabilizing effect on a club I think as uh, that period we were talking about earlier there, there doesn't seem to be a game whereby uh, as, you, as you said a game uh, a, a Derby anyway where, whereas the result didn't have something riding on it whether it was resulting in an actual sacking or just certainly right officially pressure is on this manager now and also when 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 uh, managers come into the game uh, very recently and it's one of the early games which happened quite a lot as well that seems to have set the tone then as well 
So from a Forest perspective, Billy Davies winning a few games, early games, when Forest manager against Derby really set the tone for his, his success um, as a manager for Forest and also against Derby too. It, it just, that, that again, that whole period is bonkers in terms of how it defined um, not only players' careers, um, but also managers' careers as well in that period. Um, but some managers so, really got it, didn't they? I mean, Nigel Clough <laughs> clearly got what it was all about. Billy Davis clearly got what it was all about. And both of them, amongst others as well, really understood how much that fixture meant and how how pivotal it could be in a, in a, a season and a career. Definitely. So, as you know, Forest fans, I think when those games, when Nigel Clough was manager against Derby, there didn't seem to be any other team Nigel wanted to be more than Forest. And I think that wound up a few Forest fans. But on the other side of the coin, it was a case of uh, actually Nigel wants to win these games so much because of what, you know, because of his own story, because he wanted to see, because uh, of how he perceived Forest. And obviously he wanted to, well, I couldn't speak for him, but to get one over on Forest as well. But ultimately it mattered to them so much for various reasons. And obviously that seems to be um, the the spark or underlying the... the um, the um, ferocity between these two games. And is it a good thing that it's, I mean, Derby fans were saying definitely not, but is it a good thing that there is a, there is a gap now, having had that spell of at least two matches every season, that as far as we can tell, FA Cup third round draw permitting, that there's going to be a... now, obviously. <laughs> or maybe, <laughs> but there's a gap for that all to calm down again for a little bit. From a personal perspective, yes, I, you know the, the, the games were absolutely overwhelming, uh, so much riding on them. Um, so from a personal perspective, I, I'm kind of glad uh, to be to have a break from that high pressure situation whereby so much uh, on the pitch and obviously off the pitch rides on those games, and because they became really intense. Um, and and uh, I think it, my mind goes back to one of the most significant, one of the argue one of the most significant derbies between them was the last game at the City Ground in which Forest won two one because at the time there was a real existential threat to to Derby County. There, there was you felt that this could have been the, the the final game between them in certainly Derby's current iteration as well. Um, so I think that really took on a huge significance, uh, certainly for Forest in terms of points, but it, it was, seemed to be worth so much more than that. And you got the feeling that with Derby going down or, or looking nailed on like they were going down at that stage, even though they had a bit of a revival, and obviously they did go down. But there was a feeling that with Forest being playing really well, going successfully as they were, you got the feeling that it would, it would be very East Midlands Derby for Derby to win at the city ground for so many reasons, because it would be a case of, well, even if Derby were to go down, which they did, or even if Derby were to go out of business, they'd always have that. They'd always have that in always their have won the last game. history against Forest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I felt from a Forest perspective, that was hugely important. And, 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 and in addition to that, you've got this bizarre record that a Derby manager without the surname Clough um, has, um, hasn't won at the city ground since George Joby in, I think it's 1922. Um, so um, uh, Gary Rowett came incredibly close to breaking that record uh, when Danny Pineos uh, equalised the last minute header in the two all draw. So he's the closest the manager without the surname Clough has come to breaking that record. So for those reasons, I feel that final game at the sit ground took on huge significance as well, um, which just, you know, plays this idea that um, it's, it's just a huge all encompassing game. From a Derby perspective, obviously, I'm sure they would love to see uh, the rivalry going back into place and who knows uh, so it's a fool's errand to try and predict these things perhaps at this stage where with Forest where they are and Derby where they are there's not going to be another rivalry for a good number of years or given the nature of this history of this uh, rivalry maybe they'll both be meeting again next season yeah it's interesting to know it'd be fascinating to kind of know for certain when they'll next meet yes. because there genuinely is, is obviously no way of knowing at, at, at the moment that could be as you say could be next season but it could be, you know, it could be 15 years away. Who knows? Absolutely. It could be. They're, they're like, at the moment, they're, they're, well, like many sort of close rivalry football clubs are, they're, they're two moons circling in orbit around the planet and, and they've been bashing into each other for the last 14 years, but suddenly they're on a different orbit. And as you said, who knows? It could be very soon or it could be a number of years. My thanks to David Marples. If you want to buy his book, the link is in the description below. If you want to hear more stories about the Brian Clough era, there's a good tale here or YouTube has its own recommendation that you watch this one here.